Hi there, this is Rene Rubacaba and welcome to OdoNet. So today I want to talk a little bit about Electron and using the ArcGIS API for JavaScript with Electron. Uh, I've got a couple of questions the past couple of weeks on this. Um, a couple of questions came up on GitHub uh, for the Esri loader on using Electron as I, um, with a JavaScript API and stuff. And it's something that I actually had tried out um, a couple years ago. Uh, testing out and and it worked at the time just fine uh, so i decided to uh, spin it back up haven't used it for quite a while and try and tackle it required a bit of updating on my part for the app that i was working on but it was all cool everything worked out nice so if you're not familiar with it electron is a way for you to build uh, web apps that could be used uh, across platform and installed like a desk like a desktop app so for example, uh, Visual Studio Code is an Electron app. Uh, Slack is an Electron app. Um, these are really cool uh, ways for you to build these nice apps using um, you know, just your regular web development that you would do. So you could actually build your web app if you use in a web browser and then use the same web app uh, as a desktop app in Electron. And it's got some advantages to it because there's some cool things you can do um, with the node processes by being able to use node almost like you would use a web worker to do things. So, okay, so you can check out Electron in the um, electron.atom.io. And yes, Atom um, is written in Electron too. Uh, nice little ID, so it's pretty popular. Um, documentation is pretty extensive. I mean, there is a lot of documentation. If you just look at all this stock here, uh, all these guides, the API references, um, some of this advanced documentation and stuff. Uh, this gets into if you're gonna be working on the actual Electron source. So you won't, probably won't worry much about this, but one of the really cool things you can use is this IPC main, all right? So basically what this lets you do is it lets you talk uh, from the web browser to the node process running Electron, and you can do stuff inside a node and then back and forth. So it's a way for you to be able to send messages uh, back and forth to be able to do things. It's really kind of cool. Um, and it has an example here, which doing the main process, and then what you can do in the, what they call the renderer process, which is the web page. This is the bit here that um, changed on me from when I used Electron a couple years ago. Uh, they had not at the time broken out um, IPC to be a main process and a renderer process um, tooling. It was all just one, so I had to update my app for that. But all right, so let's get to the application here. So I've got a real basic app, and let's look at what my index HTML is going to look like. So this is just a web page up and running. I've got JavaScript API in here, I've got some navigation header in here. Uh, I've got a little loader in here for when things are happening. Um, and I've got a reference to my web applications JavaScript right here. Uh, one thing you may notice right here is this bit here. This is where the questions came up recently this past week or two about how to work with the um, Dojo's require versus the nodes require inside my application. So a really cool thing you can do when you write your web app is you have access to all of the um, node tooling. So you have access to the node process. So you have um, access to nodes require inside of your application to bring in different tooling. Uh, but that's going to conflict with the require that's used by the JavaScript API and Dojo and everything. So all you need to do is rename it. Do a, rename it from uh, window.require to node. Uh, require and I can just call it node rec here. So it's a pretty simple way to do it. That's all you have to do. Once you've done that, everything else is pretty seamless at that point. All right, so let's look at our uh, index.js file. This is basically going to be our main process uh, for the node that's running in the application of the Electron app. This actually gets a whole app up and running. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring in the app browser window and IPC main from the Electron package. I'm gonna go in, I need path and URL for a couple things. I'm gonna be using this package called shapefile to be able to parse the shapefile data that's being sent from the main application into the Electron node process here. And I'll be using um, Terraformer, which is an uh, Esri library, it's an ArcGIS uh, 
library here to be able to uh, convert GeoJSON data into Esri JSON, which is a little bit easier for me to process in the client side. Um, it was not really necessary if I just have regular points in GeoJSON, but when you start working with something like polygons and you got the rings and everything, I'm just going to convert that from GeoJSON to Esri JSON. It's easier to do it using Terraformer. It's pretty quick. No big deal. Um, I have this app here, so, right? so I need to listen for when things happen on the app. There are events that are getting emitted. So when I've closed all the windows that are part of my application, I want to quit my app. And I don't know if I really need this anymore. Um, I'm doing this check to see if I'm in a Mac Darwin here. I used to have to do this. Uh, this may not be necessary anymore with Electron. I have to double check the docs. Uh, I'm just not sure, really. Um, then what I do, want to do is when the app is ready, so when it emits a ready event, I'm going to create a new browser window. And it says browser window here because I'm going to be loading my index.html into it. And I can set the size and the height and width for that window. And then set the position. So this is actually what I'm going to see on the screen in my desktop application. And I have to play around with these set position values here because I've got two monitors. And every time I open this app, it opens up in my second monitor. Um, so I have to move it around. And I'm going to show it. And once I show it, I'm going to load the URL, which is going to be my index.html file that I'm loading uh, from uh, the local Electron uh, folder I've gotten here, my package here. So I load that HTML file, and then I'm going to listen for when that window is closed. I'm going to set the window to null. Now that's not closing this actual app because I can actually open up multiple windows. Maybe I want a window that's going to be doing some sort of configuration or monitoring of something that's going on in my app. Um, so whenever I close a window, I want to set it to null. That way I can kill it. But it's not going to kill the entire application. That's what this app on the window all closed uh, event is supposed to be for. Now here's the cool part. This is the neat stuff where you can do the communication between the node process that's running and the uh, browser uh, application that's running. So I have an IPC main event that's uh, waiting for an event called upload uh, dash SHP, upload shape, right? And I'm going to emit that from the uh, browser window. Now when I do that, I'm going to get an uh, argument here which should be a path to a shape file on my machine. I'm going to use the shapefile package to open that shapefile, and then I'm going to go ahead and start reading it. And this is uh, going to be streams in here. So I'm going to read the shapefile. It actually uh, iterates through the shapes, individual shapes in the shapefile. So you need to use the recursive function to be able to read all of the shapes that make up the shapefile, which is what I'm doing here. I do source.read, and I have a promise here. And if it's done, then I'm going to go ahead and use the Windows web contents and send a IPC message to the browser window called load shape. And I'll be passing it the results that I have from parsing the shape file. Now, when it's not done, you know, I'm in the recursive function here going back and forth. I'm going to go ahead and um, insert the results, but I'm going to convert my GeoJSON to Ezra JSON into an array that I've got ready to go that's going to hold all the different um, parsed results of the shapefile. And then I'm going to go ahead and send those to the browser window and then display them on my map. So that's pretty easy there, right? So this is just a nice way to be able to use it. It's almost like um, using Node as a worker to be able to do some cool stuff. That's pretty neat. So let's look at the app here. So one of the things I'm doing in my application here, remember we renamed the nodes required to a different name called Node Rec. So I'm bringing in IPC renderer from Electron. Remember, we looked at the documentation. There's IPC main, IPC renderer, which you would use in the browser application. Um, I'm bringing in a Terraformer here, but actually I don't need this anymore, I don't believe. We'll find out if my application breaks. And then this is my regular application here. So I'm just bringing in the map, scene view, the graphic, point polygon, uh, DOM utils, uh, some uh, symbols in here to be able to symbolize the data I get back. I create my new map. I create my scene view. This is all stuff that we've uh, seen before. Um, I've got some, uh, just some UI stuff here. I have a nice little backdrop that when you're interacting with the map, maybe I am dropping, um, do my drag and drop the shape file or the map is just loading. 
I've just got a loader that shows up uh, when I'm doing that. Uh, when the view is done rendering, then I just, uh, I'm just going to hide that backdrop. Not a big deal. I create my symbols here, and then I've got some handlers here to be able to do uh, these drag over. So if I do a drag hover, I'm doing something, just some little styling that I'm doing. If I, if I leave and I remove that styling, and I'm going to hide uh, the backdrop. Um, and I have a function here to graphics. So I have a note here that technically I don't have to create a new graphic for each of these objects I get back. Um, because when you add a object that looks like a graphic to the view.graphics, it'll convert all that object to an actual graphic and it auto cast it for you. Um, but I want to use the array of graphics to in my view.goto to, to zoom to all those graphics that I'm adding to my map. And it's just easier for me to be able to do it this way instead of going back after they've been autocast and pulling the graphics out so I can zoom to them at that point. This is just much simpler for me to do. So in this case here, if, if I have a, a point, I'm assuming that geometry.x is going to be a point, then I'll create a point here. And if it's not, then I'm just going to create a polygon. So I know the two shape files I'm working with, it's a point or a polygon. Um, you'd have to figure out some other logic here if you're going to want this to really work in a production environment. Uh, there's a little bit more um, guards you want to put in place here. So I just have another function here. It's going to be add to map. So I'm going to create um, graphics from the features I'm given. That's using the two graphics method I just showed you. I'm going to add all those graphics to the view. And then I'm going to go ahead and zoom the view to those graphics. And have again, I have some um, little interaction happening here that's going to go ahead and uh, put like a, a loader on here. I'm, so I'm zooming around the map when I do this. Um, here's the IPC renderer listening for the load shape um, message that's coming from the node main process. And when I get that message, I'm just going to go ahead and fire off the function that I've got set up here to be able to process the shape file data that's been parsed. And then what this function file select handler does here, all this is doing is that as I, as I drop a um, drag and drop uh, files onto the uh, application, the electron window, I'm just going to go ahead and parse those files and for each file that I got I'm going to go ahead and send a message using IPC renderer called upload shape to the node main process to process my shape files from me. And I just have a little message saying that you know you didn't drop a shape file, you tried doing something funky. Don't do that kind of thing. I'm just adding some event listeners here um, to the view div for the, the stuff that I'm doing. The drop, drag, leave, and drag over uh, stuff that I'm working on. Alright, so let's go ahead and fire this up. Um, again this it's going to uh, it's going to open another window, so I'll bring it back in a second. Oh yeah, npm start. I didn't even show you the package on JSON. It's very simple. I've got Electron. I've got the shapefile package I talked about. I've got Terraformer. A little script here. It's just going to run the Electron command uh, in debug mode. And debug mode just means it's going to spit out um, some logs in here for things that might happen. So let me start that up. All right. So here's my uh, application running electrons. So this is a desktop application in here. All right, so I've got my CMV running and everything. It's kind of cool. So now I'm going to grab a shape file. I'm going to grab the actual .shp file. And if you know shape files are made up of a bunch of different files, all you need is the path to the .shp file, and the node package will know to grab the other files that are needed. So I'm just going to drag and drop that. There's that little UI I was talking about, the loader, loading um, graphic that comes up. That's Calcite stuff. And there they are. There are the points that I just brought in from the shape file. I've got a little pop up here. Um, this is all the data, uh, the attributes that came with that. All right, that's kind of cool. Let's grab this other one here. And this is worldwide data. So I'm going to drag and drop that. Bam, there we go. So we've got. Uh, there we go. So we've got some more uh, shape file data in here. Uh, look at all the way down. It's a lot of data. And it's got a little pop ups and everything else that uh, we might want to work with. But yeah, you can see that was pretty easy. That's not bad. And because this is a, um, I mean, Electron essentially is a Chrome browser window, 
you have debug tools that you can use when you're uh, when you're running debug mode. So you can go ahead and uh, check some stuff out here. Uh, try and debug your application. Any console.logs you send are going to go out uh, and everything else like that. And because we are running in a Chrome browser window, uh, it's, cr it's actually Chromium um, underneath for Electron. Because we're running in Chromium, um, we can use uh, ES6 stuff in all of our code because we know it's going to work. I mean, I can use my fat arrow functions and everything without any concerns that things might not work somewhere. I don't have to worry about any browser support or anything like that. If it works in Chromium, uh, I'm good to go. I don't got to worry about any of that other nonsense. So that's it. Uh, you can go ahead and you can check this out. Uh, like I said, check out the Electron documentation. There's a lot of documentation for Electron, but it's all really good stuff. There's some really cool things in here, uh, things you can do. I've barely scratched the surface of what I can use um, Electron for with the JavaScript API. I've put this out as a GitHub repo that you can check out. Um, it's just called electron at shapefile github.com slash odo. So go check that out. And you know, if you have any questions, just let me know. Thank you.